What's up, everybody? Thanks for uh, coming on another episode of Trapping with Jinx. Um, in this episode, I called this maybe a one look back. Um, if you've watched my channel for a good amount of time, uh, as a trapper, I always like to, to set a, a goals video up front. Um, just like when I'm in my trapping season, I usually like to set goals, a good plan for how my season should go. And then I, at the end of the season, I, I always put together a, a last look back where I get out all my fur. I put up all my fur. I put, take a lot of pride in it like all of us trappers do. Um, that's kind of the, the enjoyment of doing what we do. So we're going to get out my fur today. We're going to look a little over at that. I'm going to show you a little bit of my, my operation. I'm just wrapping up today. It's, today is the 13th of March. I probably worked the last two weeks just putting up fur for the most part hit my numbers and uh in this video you'll also see kind of some uh some maybe a course for next year uh what i'm working on and just a reflection of this season uh always try to get the best out of our seasons guys uh they're they're not they're they're kind of short-lived and um it won't be long before uh it'll be time to do it again so Anyways, uh, enjoy this video, and uh, here we go. Okay, guys, so I never really take a lot of time to show you guys my setup. Um, you know, it, it is important just to have a gambrel and a place to store your fur, uh, a freezer. Freeze it. Because <laughs> I've seen a lot of guys that they'll take it and they'll just refrigerate it. Um, not something you want to do. You want to just have a little space where you can um do your fur up uh and put it up so i'm working on about a, a dozen coyotes or no six coyotes today and then i'll be completely finished and we'll get that out in this video so uh i like to put my fur up in my basement um the nice thing about the the basement areas uh, i have split level house so i mean it makes it kind of easy for me um you can see here my coons, I just got it done. I just have a real easy rack that I just kind of made that stores my stuff. Um, I got probably 20 coons, pretty close to that right there. Uh, I got a three day shelf life on my coyotes. Um, hopefully this isn't too boring for you guys, but I thought I'd share this with you. Maybe um, somebody might be interested in putting up their own fur, making it look nice. I usually get a three day dry time on my, on my coyotes. Now, I put a little fan on both. I got fan on both sides. Uh, and then I comb right here before I start. But um, since it's been uh, later on the season, it doesn't take long to dry. I, I, I'm still flipping my fur. So uh, after I scrape it, you, you have that skin out. And then you put it on the, the fan. Usually a couple hours, it's almost dry. <laughs> so as opposed to the winter when it's like 50 in here um it doesn't it it's a lot slower so here here are mostly most of my fur that's kind of hanging um i bag i've got several bags of my coons that are up uh the only real area I, i'm gonna have to do a little better job on my cats because i'm seeing a lot of guys i'm gonna give them a borax bath when i get done but um they just don't look very good right now so anyways they're kind of flat i'm gonna have to do a little bit or better job of doing my cats other than that the coyotes come out real nice i had one issue with an otter i'll show it to you these big male otters see how big that thing is it's a huge otter that's not the one i had the problems with this one right here i had to cut out the wedgie board long story short uh i let it dry and about a couple days too long and the other one since i think the the board is so long uh i i did a, almost three days on this one and i couldn't get it out either so i figured out a ratchet strap uh dr drill hole in the wedgie board and the resin strap just pulls it right out but that's what i'll do next time but i've never had that issue sometimes you you get on them with a pair of pliers right here and then you just smack them up and they come right off the board but yeah this one's probably damaged so 
I don't know. It is what it is. I couldn't. I I spent two hours on that board, but I didn't damage the board. Um, just trying to get that wedgie out. Anyways, uh, here's my hanging fur. I'll get all that out and get it proudly displayed, and we'll take some pictures, and then uh, we'll talk about my season. It's a real simple setup, though. I mean, I use a five-gallon drum there. It's empty. I could do everything I need to do off this and uh, and my beam, so it works pretty good. And uh, after, of course, I dry everything. I I like to let it sit. That way, it's not sitting stale in the bag, but yeah there we go so that's kind of my setup um my deep freezers uh here's one thing i'll say about freezing fur uh freeze it fur out and flat because in a day so like yesterday i set these out and these are all ready to go they're all thawed out i just let them out nice and flat and long like that shouldn't have any issues now this one here i caught up in iowa so i rolled it it'll be somewhat froze still other than that um yeah that's kind of the operation um <laughs> it's just like basically cutting a hole in the wall kind of thing and uh, it seems to work for me um the only bad thing i'll say about the nice thing about working underneath your basement is you could regulate the heat that's why i like it so much but the the bad thing about it is that you know if i get it into a skunk or something then of course we can smell it upstairs but uh other than that it, it works pretty good for me I, I skin out in my garage in my with my shit or my skinning machine and uh that's kind of my operation it's real simple um the beam i've got was uh was my great uncle's beam so i'm just working off of it and uh there you go there's my setup so it's not real hard you can get your stretchers yourself you just need a flushing beam and uh it's so much pride when you when you put up your fur and we're gonna take a picture later and uh hope you guys like that so well guys here it is all stretched out uh it was super fun <laughs> i encourage you guys it takes a little bit of work to get it all up on the wall or on a barn it's super windy today but it worked out pretty good so my coyotes what made the picture was 68 so i caught 102 68 made the picture which means uh 34 had mange so i calculated that as a 33 percent mange ratio which is really high usually it's 20 percent for me i had some areas i was going into it was five percent and i had another area that it was between 70 and 80 percent that's how bad it was usually it's about 20 percent but at the end of all my properties of what i worked 33 percent of all the coyotes that i caught out of 102 had mange so that seems a little high but that's my area that i've been working and that's what didn't make the picture i put every, put everything together i ended up with 10 cats real nice looking cats uh i have one a couple of them are 28 pounds uh, 11 is in the picture uh one was carried over from last year nine beaver from the spring um i put them up i didn't have a chance really to do much beaver trapping this year a little bit in the fall and a little bit here lately but all of these raccoons guys are just completely incidentals i bet i caught when i went up for the two weeks in iowa I bet I caught at least 30, 20 to 30 of these. Uh, and <laughs> some of them are pretty blue. But uh, uh, yeah, that's, these are all incidentals. And then uh, my nine otter, it's the otter. The otter came out pretty good too, except for that one blue one on the end. I had, a, I had an otter that was 28 pounds. It was a male, I think it was that one there. So, and then this one here with his legs up in there, that's a badger. Looks pretty good. Came out nice. Always like getting together a nice little picture. It just looks so so cool. Take some some pictures. Now later on, uh, twenty years down the road, the kids will be all <laughs> they'll look at those pictures and say, "That's my dad." And that's what he does for four months out of the year. So, uh, I had one really good coyote. He's right here in the middle. 
And then I had another one I boraxed it. Um, I'm anxious to see how those will turn out. Uh, now, a lot of you guys will always ask me, you know, where are you selling to? When you put up your fur and it's dried, you have the luxury of, of, of holding on to fur if you want to. So uh, I have, I will sell a little bit to Grown Wool GFW and I will sell the majority of this, especially all my cats and my coyotes are gonna go to fur harvesters. That's where I'm kind of going right now. They're out of Canada. I used to sell to NAFA, um, but that's kind of my plan right now. Um, you're, I always say when, there's two times a year that I always hate uh, pulling traps on pole day and then parting ways with fur. Uh, there's a lot of hours in all of this, <laughs> which I know a lot of you guys, that you guys feel the same way. So we take a lot of pride in what we catch. Um, just encourage you guys, if you guys aren't already getting these pictures and just doing it like this, it's kind of fun. And, uh, but anyway, so there it is. That's my season ending picture i had a great season this year it was so much fun uh the goal was to catch 102 coyotes or 100 coyotes to cut 102 and um i had a blast getting there it was so much fun every one of these coyotes that i caught was fun <laughs> i can't get enough i can't get it i, I just, just the, the funness never wears off with trapping um it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it it just never ever wears off so there you go i just thought i'd share that with you guys um i'm gonna exit out uh tell you a little bit about what i plan on doing for our youtube and uh that'll be the end of the video thanks okay guys so i like to take a minute of your time i always do this as a trapper at the very beginning of the season i set goals i've been trapping for 25 years now i think 24 25 I always, every season, I, I try to get the best out of my season, I set goals. Uh, the goals kind of helps, helps motivate me when the nasty weather's out, or it just, it just, it is, for some reason, it just helps motivate ourselves. So that's why I like to set those. I set the goal for 100 coyotes. I'll be honest with you, there's probably three times I just wanted to quit and say, I had a good season, that was enough. But then I thought, well, I made it this far, Let's see if we can't get that 100 because I don't want to be later on uh, saying, gosh, I was so close. Why did I just give it up? Um, it's four months long was, you know, I started in early November. I had a great plan, put it all together, uh, lined out my land, my equipment. Um, and that was that was part of the fun of setting goals. Um, one thing I will say about uh, being numbers driven and uh, one thing I will say is that if you have a family, if you have a job, the only side effect for being numbers driven is that you're uh, you're focused on on hitting those numbers. Uh, trapping's a priority, so there are a lot of things that you find out you miss when you're when you're driving to hit numbers. Uh, that's the only real side effect. Like, like I trap during Thanksgiving. Uh, I was trapping. I had run my trap line. Uh, if I'm sick, you know, I, I got sick a few times. I had to run my trap line. I couldn't just take off and go shopping with the kids, you know, just stuff like that. That you know, that's the only thing that I'll say about numbers. It seems to be, you have to kind of find your limitations, if that makes sense. You don't want to neglect your family. You want to make sure that's still a priority, but at the same time, um, that's the only bad thing about numbers. Uh, with that being said, so. And then the second thing I always like to do is like to put together this type of stuff at the end of the year. And I reflect on what I did and what I want to possibly do next year. So I don't want to give away all my secrets because I'm already preparing for next season. I hope you guys are too. Uh, I've been kind of, um, I've been more self-focused instead of producing quality for you guys. I think that's i've been so focused on hitting my numbers and i hope you guys like the catches and stuff that i think maybe next season i'll try to focus more on you guys more on the channel um, producing a higher quality content and uh spending more time um producing these these videos for you guys that is uh, that's about all i want to let out of the box i've got already some big plans already going and it's so excited because um 
I'm gonna hit the road. And I just, I, I just, that's where I went at right now. That's all I'm gonna tell you guys. Um, I'm just, I'm excited for next season already. So, anyways, I had a great time. Put all, put together all this fur, worked it over. Let me know what you guys think. If there's some videos you guys want to see, if there's some other content coming out, I'll have my ADC videos coming out here soon. I'll also have my top four producing sets that help me catch all these coyotes. It'll be in there. Um, I'm going to not let out a whole lot of secrets, but I've got a bunch of content from videos and stuff and catches from this season that didn't make it in. So there'll be t at least two episodes that I can think of from some catches i just really got to catch in there for a while so anyways hope you guys liked it i had a great time putting together this season hope i didn't talk to your ears off too much but um yeah this was fun i had a great time so if you guys are new to the channel make sure uh, you hit subscribe turn the bell notifications on that way you don't miss anything from jinx otherwise click the big thumbs up helps me out a lot i'm jinx and have a great day